Good morning and welcome to your Friday devotion. I hope this has been a good week for you this first week in June. And uh, we're continuing on in our little study of hope in the Lord. And this one begins with a pretty tough passage from the book of Lamentations. It's from Lamentations 3.16. Pretty rough. Listen to this. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Did you know that what led up to great is thy faithfulness? You know that hymn, the great Billy Graham hymn. Uh, did you know that what led up to that was this incredible sense of being crushed and not having hope and that all of your dreams had died? I mean, it's pretty rough. So let's see what uh, hope in the Lord has to say about this today. I'm on the wrong page. Here we go. When has life turned upside down for you, your congregation or your nation? Was it a cancer diagnosis, the loss of a loved one, or a family tragedy that upended things? Did your congregation's building burn, or was staff embroiled in some scandal, or do members split into disagreeing factions? What does Lamentations tell us about times when society and the world seem to be falling apart? There are three central messages for us as we ponder that hope, that our hope is in the Lord. First, like the poet, our hope might be hanging by a thread. But like the poet, we are honest about it before God. Even if we aren't saying nice things, we can name our hurt, anger, fear, and injustice involved, and God will hear it. I have to tell you, I have to stop there. Because so many people have said to me, they don't feel like they can be honest with God. God's going to be angry with me. He's going to keep me out of heaven if I tell him what I really think. No, God wants to hear what you really think because that's real relationship. Let's keep going. A second message of Lamentations is that honestly naming the pain, anger, and injustice can bring birth to hope. A lot of times just saying it, a lot of times just expressing it and dealing with it can help. Hiding our pain or living in denial deprives us of the support of others. The poets of Lamentations wrote for the instruction of others, even us. And for the good of community, of the community of faith. Third, and final, hope is not easy. There is no shame in struggling to hope in the Lord. We Christians cannot force ourselves or others to hope, but we can accompany people in their suffering, remembering together God's many mercies. Let me stop there again. One of the greatest things about Jesus being born in Bethlehem, coming to this earth, walking with us, was the fact that he was with us. The fact that he walked with us through our pain and our uncertainty. Culture wars do not produce hope. Gathering in fellowship and remembering God's mercy does. In Christ, God knows our sufferings and is faithful, now and for all eternity. This is the message we hear in the closing lines from Walter Brueggemann's prayer, the God who yearns and waits for us. And I would say let's end our time together by praying uh, Walter Brueggemann's prayer together. Let's pray. So we give thanks that you are the God who yearns and waits for us and that our connection to you is always from your side. And that is because of your goodness that death, that neither life nor death, nor angels nor principalities, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from you. We give you thanks for your faithfulness, so much more durable than ours. Amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, as I said, I hope this has been a good first week of June for you. Uh, keep in mind, Sunday's coming. That means we've got worship, uh, traditional at 9 a.m., and uh, the, connect, the Life Song uh, service at 1115. Uh, if you can't be with us in person here at Christ the King, you can join us online at ctklutheran.org.